Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton, and this is the lesson on conscious envisioning. Conscious envisioning simply means intentional creation. Intentional or deliberate manifestation by starting with that which we think and that which we can actually visualize. Now there's a lot of ways that we can visualize things. And in fact, at the end of this lesson, I'm going to give you an exercise that I would like for you to do, preferably after you've moved through the material within this program, because I think after you've moved through the material in this program and had a chance to integrate it, that's the best time for you to put yourself in the space of this exercise in order to receive counsel and guidance for you to move forward. But before we get to that exercise, we're going to need to go over the five steps of conscious envisioning. And I'll tell you what the five steps are and then we're gonna go into each step individually so you know exactly what it is I'm talking about and exactly what you're gonna to need to do in order to consciously envision the business, the clients, the money, but most importantly, the life that you wanna have. The first step of conscious envisioning is identifying and acknowledging patterns. The second step, in conscious envisioning is clearing those patterns. The third step of conscious envisioning is envisioning the life that you want to live. The fourth step is calling in that life. And the fifth step is living in that life right now. So let's go through again those steps one by one so we can all be really clear about exactly what we need to be doing. The first step in conscious envisioning is again identifying and acknowledging patterns. Now when I say patterns, I just want to say that not all patterns are bad. I've created patterns for myself and I've created systems for myself and I've created ways of thinking for myself that are useful and which add to my spirituality and my experience. What we're speaking about here though in this first step are the patterns that are not in alignment with your blueprint, God's blueprint, or your higher self's blueprint. These are patterns which are messy. These are patterns which are heavy. These are patterns that actively contaminate you. And these are patterns that you're walking around the planet with that are dictating the experience that you have. These patterns tend to be rooted in victim consciousness. What do I mean by that? It means that we tend to be stuck to stories of ourselves, versions of ourselves that somebody else told us that we were or somebody else implanted into us. In the lesson on the curse of comparison, we talked about how insidious it is to hook into ideas of ourselves that never even existed, nor should they ever have existed. That will stop us in our tracks and often take us right out of the game. The versions of ourselves that I spoke of there are patterns. These are ideas, these are belief systems tied to all sorts of different things that keep us in this frame of mind. Some of you right now think that you're unworthy of the work that you've been called to do. Some of you right now don't feel skilled enough or smart enough or articulate enough to be successful at what it is that you want to do. Some of you think you have too many hang-ups, too many roadblocks. You get angry, you get sad, you get depressed, you get anxious. A lot of you have these patterns and a lot of you are living reactively as a result of these patterns. What does it mean to live reactively? Living reactively is where life just kind of happens to us and we're a ping pong ball or we're in a pinball machine just going from here to there reacting, triggered, and we're not living our life in full measure. We're not being intentional. Much of the reactions that we have, much of the triggers that we have are connected to those messy, sloppy, weighty, contaminating patterns that we're harboring. And I spoke about these triggers already didn't I in the introduction? I spoke about these reactions and how they're an opportunity, how they truly are spirit pushing to the fore something that you now have an opportunity to clear. And when you clear it, you go higher because your vibration raises. When you go higher, you get closer to God. When you're closer to God, now the attributes of God are populating your life. So this is a gift when you're triggered. It's a gift when you can notice and acknowledge that you're in reaction that you're being triggered. 
This is a gift because it's a call to do the deeper work of clearing that pattern. Some of us are absolutely unconscious to our patterns. That's okay. The triggers and the reactions are the roadmaps. Others among us absolutely know what those patterns are. We know that we're still hooked into that person who abused us. We know that we're still hooked into that person who didn't give us an opportunity. We know that we're still hooked into that divorce that we didn't want or that thing that didn't work out the way that we wanted to. We know, don't we, that we're impacted by that, that we're still living in that. Awesome. Awesome. It's good that you know that. Personally, I know, I do know that I still have patterns around my dad. I still do. I'm probably going to have them for the rest of my life. This is why I'm grateful for my father. Do you want to see a picture of him, by the way? Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. This is my father when he was a young man. Can you see him? He was out on a fishing boat. He liked to fish for mahi and marlin and look at that guy. What a cutie, huh? So handsome. He was a playboy come from a rich family, had everything that he ever wanted. I have no idea why my father ended up to be the person that he ended up to be other than he was fulfilling a contract. He was fulfilling that contract for me. He was fulfilling that contract for my mama. He was fulfilling that contract for my brother. And guess what? My father was fulfilling that contract for you because without him, I wouldn't be who I am today. Without him, I couldn't connect with you at the level that I'm connecting with you. Yeah, my father abused me. Not physically or sexually, but he abused me by terribly abusing my mother. Violently, terribly. And I witnessed that, and that's abuse, of course. He abused me, my brother, my mother, and other people by verbally assaulting them. I mean, my father was quite the character, and I will forever have work around that. I know right now that I have work around that because I'm being triggered by this picture. And I'm not angry, I'm sad, I'm emotional. I'm getting emotional. But most of what I feel right now is love and gratitude for this man because I believe that's what he signed up for. Maybe he did it because of karma. Maybe he did it just because he loved me. He came to model principles to me that shaped the person that I've become. And while I still have patterns around that, look at how far I've come. Look at how grateful I authentically am. That gratitude is love. That love is light. And that light comes from spirit. And now, looking at a picture of my dad, talking about my dad, even thinking about the things that my dad did, connects me more strongly to spirit. So even though I've got patterns, I'm working through those patterns. I'm so happy I'm conscious of the patterns so that I can continue to intentionally do the work. And you need to look at your life in much the same way. Hopefully you didn't live the way that I did with this type of a personality. Although again, I'm not judging it because it made me the person that I am, but you have your own stuff, don't you? You have your own feelings, you have your own neglects, your own abuses. Maybe you've abused and neglected and perpetrated and cheated and lied and you've got this stuff in you. Those are patterns. And what I want us to do in this first step is to get real about the various patterns that we have. Acknowledge them. Just be honest about them. Be honest about your triggers and your reactions because being honest allows you to identify them. And when you identify them, now we can get conscious about clearing them. Now we can get really intentional about doing the work within the patterns. The next step after identifying and acknowledging the patterns is clearing the patterns. Now let's go back to my papa. <laughs> I tried a lot in my life to clear my patterns around my father. I went to therapy, many therapists. I developed an eating disorder as a direct result of my condition as a child and I tried a lot to deal with that. In fact, I think the eating disorder was a way for me to deal with the abuses that I had witnessed and that I had suffered. I tried a lot and at some point I just kind of capitulated and said, I'm never gonna get over it. This is never gonna be something that I can resolve. That was a long time ago and I was wrong because I realized at some point 
that I don't really need to try that hard to clear it. I also realized that in my compromised state, by being impacted and exposed to these energies and these patterns, I didn't really have the right answers necessarily or the tools to directly combat that pattern. And so I turned to God instead. God is the light. God is love. There is no more powerful divine energy than God, than source, than creator. And that light of God refines everything by fire. It clears away all the patterns. It clears away all the debris. It gets right into the source of things and brings it boop, right into alignment. And so I turned to God instead and I said, God, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to forgive him. I don't know how to get through this work, but you do. You have the light. Shine your light, God, into me. Shine your light, God, into the hidden spaces and the patterns that I don't even know are in me. And God, clear them. I don't know how to do it, but God, hear my cry. I want to do it. I want to clear these patterns. I want to create space, God, so that you can come in and fully occupy and so that I can do what I came here to do. I'm tired of being held back. You do it. You're the God of miracles. You're the spirit of evidences. You're the source of all things. I don't have to know how to do that work. You can do it. And instead of focusing inordinately on analysis and techniques and development and all of this, all of which, by the way, is very helpful. I'm not saying it's not. But for me, instead of really focusing on all these systems that were supposed to help me, I released it and focused instead on the ways that I could connect to God. The things that I could do to be high vibration that really made me happy, that really made me blissful, that really made me feel the spirit of source energy. I focused on that and not the things I did not know how to resolve. And the light of that, the light of the bliss, the light of the joy, the light of the connection to the most high God refined me by fire, refined me by fire. Layer after layer after layer was peeled away. More light came in and I became who it is that you see before you now. Does that mean I don't need more light? <laughs> no. Does that mean I don't have any more problems, patterns, or issues, or triggers? No, but I'm conscious of them. And I'm working with spirit to resolve them in order to begin to envision the lives that we want for ourselves. We have to clear out the muck and the mire. And if we don't know how to do that, we have to be at least willing to cry out for it and to ask God to do it for us. And then we need to orient always from a place of love, pointing in the direction of the things of love, because that's where the light is. And that's the light through which the patterns are cleared or refined by fire. And once the patterns are clear, we now have more space. Now it's easier to hook into what it is that God wants for us what it is that we're supposed to be doing in service to this planet. Now we've got more space in us for spirit to occupy. And when spirit occupies, spirit points us in the direction we need to go. Spirit guides us. Spirit leads us. And so let me close that step by just saying, be brave enough to look at the wounds. Be brave enough to have a picture of your dad on your buffet. Be brave enough to look at that and feel what it is that you feel because that's your invitation to deeper work and be brave enough to want to be grateful for this man or for that person or for that situation. Start there and call in God to do the heavy lifting. Now let's move on to step three. Step three is where we get into consciously envisioning our life. We start to think now because we've got space, and spirit is guiding us and spirit is inspiring us actively. We've got space to truly begin to dream about all the life that we want to live and all the things that we want to do. We're connected to the reality that we were created in perfection. We were created in magnificence and now we get to be the God of our lives. You are all gods. I am God. I am the God of my life. What do I want to do with it? And here's where we start thinking about who we want to be with, 
where we want to live, what kind of house we want to live in, how do we want to stay connected, where do we want to fellowship, what do we want to study, and what do we want to do with our gifts and our talents. You probably already have an idea what your gift and your talent is. You already know, I see spirits and they want me to convey messages. Or you already know that you just have a way with people. You can inspire them and encourage them and so you're a coach. You probably already know what it is that you want to do and so begin now envisioning that for yourself. But let me make a recommendation here because you could certainly picture yourself in a chair, in an office, giving a session to somebody who needs coaching and you can picture what that place looks like and you can picture what that client looks like and what you're doing for that client but bump it up a notch go higher i don't know who said it but if it doesn't scare you if the idea of what is possible doesn't scare you just a little bit then it's not enough you need to go higher and so start envisioning big start dreaming big. This is easier when you buy into your own magnificence. This is easier when you buy into your anointing and your purpose here on this planet. Get as specific as you want to in all the areas of your life, but in particular, begin to start dreaming and thinking and actively imagining and getting specific around your service and your business and what you want to do with your gifts. Step four is calling in the vision. What does that mean? Calling in the vision is taking what we have envisioned for ourselves and our service and our life and bringing it into material form. Now, this does not mean that we're manifesting it immediately, but it does mean that we're taking the action steps necessary to begin the manifestation process. We call in the vision by setting our life up in such a way that we are reminded of what we're created and what we want to create. Calling in your vision is the art of feeling as if you are already that. And so as I sit here now in my present position and as the teacher of this class and your teacher, I can also see the vision of me on a stage in front of thousands of people. And by the way, that scares me, okay? But it's possible. And I see the vision of it and I can actually sit here and think about that and those people where is it at what am i wearing how old am i and i can feel it i can feel it it's in my blueprint if it's in your blueprint you're going to resonate with it you're going to vibrate to it and i can feel it and i can harness and run and express the energy of already being that if we can connect to the energy of that which we want to make manifest before it is manifested, we accelerate the process of manifestation. That's the key. And that's the part a lot of us don't do. You know, we do other things to call in a vision, like we create a list or we create a vision board, but we don't spend enough time sitting here going, I can feel that. I'm running that. I see the potential of that. Oh my gosh, I can see my service. I can see my life is that. I'm getting goosebumps right now just talking to you about it. We don't do enough of that. And in order to call in your vision and make manifest that which you seek to create, you have to find ways to do that. Maybe it is a vision board before which you sit and look at the images and the words. And that helps you to get to the place where I just was. Maybe it's crafting affirmations that you post around your home and Several times a day you stop before each one and you speak out the affirmation and you take a moment to really feel what it would feel like to already be that. There are so many different ways to call in your vision through the law of attraction, but the most important and dynamic of them all. I can feel that. That's the most, that's, that's where you got to be. And that's where you have to be a lot. You have to be in that space in a sustained fashion because that's an energy. It's a signature. It is a broadcast. I am now broadcasting to the universe. I get it. I'm resonating with my blueprint. I'm seeing it. I'm feeling it. I've got goosebumps. I'm broadcasting it. And what does the universe do? It sweeps in to give me that which I vibrate. And so the more I spend time in the vision of it, the more I call it into my life. Now let's move on to the final step in the conscious envisioning process, which is living actively in the vision that we've created for ourselves. 
Now this too can include things like affirmations and things like vision boards and all the other law of attraction tools in our toolbox, which are awesome. But this step also requires us to take action steps. And what I mean by that is, and let's take it back to me, okay, I'm sitting here. I can see my life for myself. I can see myself in front of thousands of people. I can see myself eloquent, giving a message that ministers to people. And so the next question would be, what kind of action steps can I take right now to get there and be excellent at it? In my case, that might inspire me to take something like Toastmasters, which is where you can go and speak publicly, which I fear very much, but you can get good at it. You can get excellent at it. This might also involve me planning out to the finest detail exactly what I'm talking about, exactly what I'm saying to these people and when I'm saying it. What am I saying? When am I saying it? When am I singing? When am I toning? When am I adding a band? When am I getting out into the audience and delivering attunements? When does that take place? Treating it very seriously and getting the details down to the finest point. Other action steps would include getting the certifications that I need to be great at what I want to do or getting the qualifications or doing the studying or hanging out with the kind of people who I can calibrate to that will make me excellent at what I want to do, what my vision is telling me that I can and will become. There are all kinds of different action steps that we can take and mine are going to be different than yours. But we have to always know that we can't just dream it. We have to move in the direction of it. I can't sit here and wait for somebody to call me and ask me to be a speaker at their huge conference of thousands of people. It doesn't work that way. I have to put myself out there. I have to contact some of the organizers of these seminars. I have to put myself in proximity to some of the big movers, the big motivators, and the big inspirers. That's how I do it. I have to move in the direction of my vision and my dream. So you'll want to figure out for yourself what that means and start doing that. And now to close this lesson, I just want to give you an exercise that I'd like for you to do. And again, I'd like for you to do this exercise when you're feeling clear, when you have come into contact with what your patterns are and you've done some work around clearing those patterns and asking for help clearing those patterns. I want you to do this work when you're already acquainted with what is possible and it's magnificent. I want you to do this work when you feel magnificent and when you feel and you know and you believe that you were created in perfection. When you're there, when you're feeling that, even just a little bit, that's the time to do this exercise. This exercise is going to require that you are in a state of receptivity that you are in a state of availability and this is best achieved through meditation. Now as light workers, I assume that most of us already know the value and the importance of meditation and most of us probably know how to meditate. And so I would recommend that you take maybe 15, 20, 30, 45 minutes to really get into that state of neutrality and even perhaps become a little bit altered because when we're a little bit altered, or a little bit tranced out, that's when it's really easy for spirit to give us impressions or to give us information and in specific to give us messaging. Okay, so you wanna make sure you go into this exercise when you are in that state. And when you are, what you're gonna do is you're gonna ask spirit a few questions. And I want to, before I proceed, attribute this entirely to Mr. Michael Beckwith. I don't know if you recognize him from The Secret. This is his book. It's called Life Visioning. And I want to share this with you because it works. <laughs> it's powerful. I did this myself and you know, I, I'm a channel and I frequently obviously connect with spirit and my guides, but I was surprised after going into this exercise and this meditation with the intention of asking these questions, just how much actually came through in terms of spirit messaging and answers. So again, this comes straight out of this book, Life Visioning. I will leave a link to this on the page in which you are watching this lesson. And I do recommend that you get this book because it's wonderful. Okay, so when you're in that state of neutrality and when you're open and available, the first question you're gonna ask is, what is the highest vision for my life? What seeks to emerge in, through, and as 
my life? After asking this first question, you want to go silent and receive. Anything that comes through is valuable, even if you don't understand what it is. Maybe you just see a clairvoyant image of yourself on a stage or writing something or talking to a certain kind of person. Maybe all you do is feel something. Whatever it is, it is valuable and important. You want to have a piece of paper and a pen. And when the transmission feels complete from spirit to you in answer to your questions, that's when you write down, trying to stay as best as possible in that neutral state, the answers that you are given and take a moment and move fluidly into the next question, which is what must I become in order to manifest this vision? What qualities must I cultivate and do it again? You've got your paper, you've got your pen and you're just waiting to receive. Write anything and all things down, especially things that are given to you that don't necessarily feel possible. It doesn't matter. Spirit will often show you glimpses of you 10 years from now in the magnificence of your purpose. And you might not be able to connect with that intellectually, but that's okay. Write it down because spirit is showing you something very important. And then once you've received that transmission, move on to the next question, which is a good one. <laughs> what must I release to manifest this vision, these are the patterns, these are the people, these are the things that we're harboring and carrying around. So now we're asking spirit to tell us directly, what do I have to release so that I can manifest this vision that you've shown me of myself? Write it down, receive the full transmission, and then move into the next and the last question, which is, what talents, gifts, skills, and qualities do I already possess that will serve this vision? Mr. Beckwith says that this is actually a powerful question because it comes from a place not of what do I need to get, but what do I already have? What have I already been given? Spirit, show me what it is that I already have that I can use to manifest this vision. Have your paper, have your pen, and receive that full transmission. Now, after you've done that, after you've received this vision and you've or these bits and pieces of a vision, because this is an exercise that you're going to want to do periodically and consistently. But once you've received what spirit has given you, you want to make sure to say yes. We want to make sure that we agree with it, even though parts of us might be like, what? I saw myself on stage in front of 2000 people that might freak us out a little bit because if it doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. Even if you can't connect in your brain to the entire thing, you still want to say yes to it. You still want to agree to it. Remember, this is a free will dimension. Spirit is not going to make you do something that you in this life do not want to do. Spirit is never going to take you and say, nope, you got to be on this path doing this thing. Spirit will inspire you. Spirit will guide you if asked and spirit will answer your questions. It's at the point where we receive those answers and then say yes to them that we seal the deal. Now we have set things in motion. Now we have added that layer, that accelerant to the manifestation process. And now we are moving in the direction of our dreams. Now we are envisioning our lives, our service, our love, our happiness, our purpose, consciously, intentionally, and in partnership with spirit. So please make sure that you understand how important I think it is to this entire process of conscious envisioning that you ultimately do this exercise and use what was given as your vision from spirit as the stuff or as the foundation upon which you will stand when you do step five, which is to actively live within the vision. We are living in the vision that spirit gave to us. We're saying yes and partnering with the vision that God revealed to us. And when we do that, we're guaranteed success.